Yeah, so next up here, we want to do displacement and we can do that quickly here. So we drop down a Pixar displace node, like so. We want a Pixar layer displacement, Pixar disp scalar layer. And we want to have a Pixar disp transform, Pixar disp transform. And we want to have our displacement uh, texture. So I'm going to browse for my displacement texture here first. It's going to be this disp linear sRGB ASIS. So now is probably a time to save this project actually, because sometimes adding displacement might want to crash uh, if you do it while you're rendering, etc. So let's save this one and go to my projects folder. Okay, so this texture was authored with 0.5 as zero value. So we need to essentially transform this. So Renderman knows what is supposed to be zero value. And that's something we do this Pixar displacement transform node is responsible for doing just that task. If we go here into my uh, remapping mode and set this to centered it's essentially defaults a 0.5. So that's essentially already taken care of. So we just need to hook up our result R into this scalar. We want to have our result float into the base layer scalar. This result float into displace scalar. And this one, the Pixar displays that is essentially the, the node is, is actually doing the displacement. We hook this one up into the output here of this sub output. You can see here nothing happened and that's because we need to apply a geometry override. So I'm just gonna jump back using my two button here. I'm gonna hit save while we have this one set up already. We want to have a render geometry setting here. I'm gonna insert it here somewhere. I'm gonna do it under my material assignment, but you could do it essentially almost anywhere. You wanna apply this to all of your geometries or, or essentially all the geometries you want to displace, I would say. So if you have a, a, a geometry that you know that you don't wanna displace, this place you need to essentially exclude it from your primitive but in my case i'm just gonna uh, essentially take my snail group and say slash star star all geometries under this location i want to essentially apply this uh, parameter to and go to my random section and say primitive prototypes here or prototype attributes and say enable displacement set and create and radius set and create and we want to have this somewhere above one so 0.2 for example and we can see here now something started to happen and that is essentially my edges that i created in mari but you can see here it looks totally crazy it kind of looks cool but it, it looks crazy and that's because our strength for this effect is way 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 too much so let's go back into our material and start to tweak this slightly here. There's a few places you can do that. You can you can do it here in your displace transform and say, for example here, uh, go to your height depth and you can say 0.1 and point, point 0.1 and that will essentially bring, bring it down. Now you're essentially limiting your values, how much they will go. You can see here, they, it's quite aggressive here. So you could take this down further, but you can also do it here on this node, the gain here, for example, uh, your base layer gain if you set this to zero obviously there's going to be no displacement and if you start to raise this you will start to see these edges becoming more and more prominent here if you're a texture artist and you want to set up displacement it's good to have a, a chat with the look dev artist that you know going to handle this or if you're doing this yourself agree on like a strength value that you want to tweak your textures against there might be some, for example, like global values or something that your pipeline is requiring. In the next episode, we're going to take a look at how we can create a basic turntable. If you want to support my channel, consider dropping a comment in one of the videos with information of upcoming episodes you want to see from Measurement Studio. See you in the channel. Bye bye.